Uh, the significance of the results that uh, we will be reporting is that we found a new avenue to uh, to apply to individuals with very severe spinal cord injury that will help them to uh, improve their motor function. That is, they will be able to stand and to step and be able to improve perhaps their voluntary control based on our initial results. And the way we uh, arrived at this uh, new insight is that we've known for some time, particularly in animal experiments, that the spinal cord has a pretty sophisticated neural networks within it. And we've described this often as the spinal cord is actually smart and it's plastic, that is, it can change, uh, it can even learn a motor tasks that it, it's taught. And this, is, this can happen even in absence of any input from the brain. Now, we also know that in human subjects, uh, we have taken advantage of this phenomenon, but it's in individuals which have injuries which are called incomplete motor incomplete or sensory incomplete injuries. That is, they have severe injuries, but they cannot consciously or voluntarily move muscles that are innervated below the lesion. Now, those individuals, we have learned, uh, the work uh, through a number of investigators, including our uh, uh, collaborators in, in this particular experiment, Dr. Harkema in, at University of Louisville, we have learned that uh, individuals with these severe incomplete injuries, when they are trained to step on the treadmill, they can significantly improve their uh, ability to step, the speed at which they can step, and the quality of their stepping. Now, but there has been much less success in individuals with injuries that are considered complete. That is, they have no voluntary control of the muscles below the lesion. When someone gets injured, for example, uh, you always hear, it, can the individual make any movements? Can they move their toe and so forth? So this is because this is a very significant uh, evaluation, that is, do they have any control below the lesion? So like I say, individuals with incomplete injuries, rehabilitation has been reasonably successful, particularly successful for some. However, some it ha has not been successful. We don't really know the difference. But in this particular case, we're dealing with a subject that has a motor, what's con considered to be a motor complete injury. That is, he, he can make no voluntary or conscious control of movements of the lower limbs. And so what we found is that we can, this network, this smart network of neurons within the spinal cord, we can change the properties of this network uh, using a, a procedure called epidural stimulation. That is, we've placed electrode arrays, a series of 16 electrodes, are placed on top of the spinal cord, and then we can stimulate in certain places within this array and change the properties of this network. We change, we call it changing the physiological state. Now we go through the day routinely and change the physiological state of our mind, and you can change the physiological state of the spinal cord. When we go to sleep, for example, our physiological properties of our brain and spinal cord changes. It changes in a way that we become more relaxed. And then when we get really excited, our networks get more uh, excitable, and, and we can see these behavioral differences. Well, what we're doing here is using epidural stimulation to increase the excitability of this network. But a very important point, and what's really different here, is we're not actually stimulating at an intensity that will induce the movement. We're just modulating the activity level of this, uh, the background activity of this network. So the other new thing that we found, that the reason this will work, is because we now know that this smart network 
can interpret the sensory information that's coming from the legs. For example, when you're standing, your spinal cord knows that you're standing on one leg or the other leg, and when you're stepping, it knows that you're stepping because you have these thousands of axons and nerve fibers that are going back to the spinal cord and telling the spinal cord exactly what's happening. Now, even though the individual with a complete injury may not be able to feel all of this sensory information, and normally, see, this sensory, sensory information goes to the spinal cord, and then it goes to the brain. And then the brain may modulate what's going to happen given the sensory information. But in this case, we know that the sensory information can go to the spinal cord and tell the spinal cord what to do. In other words, it knows whether the individual is trying to stand or trying to step or whatever it's trying to do. The, so again, the important point is the, the importance of the sensory information that's coming in and it can actually serve as the control. So uh, if, if a person wants to step faster or there's uh, more load or you can even change directions and this is because this, the sensory information is so complex from these thousands and thousands of sensory input, but see, the spinal cord is smart enough, it knows exactly what's happening. And so we've learned to take advantage of that. So a combination of increasing the activity level, of background activity level of this network, and then using the sensory information from the legs, we've been able to uh, uh, achieve a level of function that has not been demonstrated before uh, in an individual with a motor complete injury. That is, this individual can stand for several minutes uh, independently. Uh, now, several minutes may not sound like a big deal, but uh, several, uh, several minutes of standing for an individual that has not stood for several years is, is, is quite important. Well, this, this research could also lead to other, uh, to treatment of other diseases and neuromotor disorders as well, uh, because of the basic concept of just changing the excitability of the spinal cord, we, we think that it could help individuals with uh, Parkinson's. It may help individuals with, uh, with stroke. The implications are, are fairly large, and I know that this is a pretty dramatic statement, but uh, based on what we've seen so far, we're very anxious to test this in these other uh, experimental paradigms. Well, the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation have been very important and supportive uh, from almost the beginning of our research, and particularly uh, when we had the opportunity to interact with Christopher Reeve himself. Uh, so he was very supportive and very excited about the intervention of locomotor training, and he's been very excited about uh, the experiments that, not, that all the scientists are doing that's helping to advance uh, the science. He always emphasized the urgency of it. And since his death, the CDRF have continued to be very supportive. They're particularly supportive of this project uh, involving epidural stimulation because they have recognized very early that the, these results could be highly significant. And they are doing everything they can to help us gain support, financial support, so that we can go ahead and develop these new technologies.